So hello, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I would give you a quick uh, update on the goings-on that have been going on. I've been uh, kind of silent for a while, um, partly because uh, I, I, uh, I don't know what to say about the situation that we're in exactly. We have switched over to the new server, so everything is there where you can see it. However, we uh, hosting a video uh, hosting video is actually still very resource intensive. So um, although our server can currently handle what we're looking at right now, um, I've been a little bit cautious to come out and be like, okay, we're ready, and, and open the floodgates because uh, uh, it's still really Really demanding on the server to be running all these videos. Um, the other thing we've done is we've started working on our Minecraft server, and uh, so we've actually done some interesting things. We've got some good plans for that, um, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, to start with, I'm going to explain what's going on kind of with our videos. Um, the first thing that we've done is we've actually we've looked into a lot of avenues. Um, the first thing that I've done is I've started re-uploading videos to YouTube uh, for the Mentally Advanced series so that we can take a load off of our server and then kind of go back to the way things were, but then still have the extra power and, and, uh, you know, bandwidth and whatnot that we can bring in more people and we should be okay, you know, the way that we are. It's a more expensive setup, granted, but, uh... I think it'll work out for us. We shouldn't we shouldn't go under uh, or anything like that just just through server costs. Although you know, Petrup and I have talked about what we're gonna do in terms of finances. Because before we just split everything kind of down the middle, um, uh, like our like I would just cover I was just covering costs and then I would you know like and so but now it's gotten to where like uh, the costs pretty much annihilated my half of the income. And so Pederip said, like, well, why don't we just pay our, our expenses first, and then we can split that. So overall, you know, we're kind of looking at, you know, like I said, the cost the costs have kind of taken a lot of chunk out of what we made in the past. But uh, but we've we've kind of got plans. We've sort of developed a business plan as a result of all this. We've had to because it's not practical to, to invest so much money into something and then not have uh, an idea for it. It's not like a, it can't just be for fun anymore, thanks to some of the stuff that's happened recently. But in any case, though, we have uh, we have tried to upload those videos to YouTube. Um, it could be anywhere from like a couple of months to seriously like a year before all the mentally advanced videos are up, and that's just that's just the eleven that are down right now. And that's because the system through YouTube is so bureaucratic and slow. Um, every time that we upload a video, uh, the people who look at it. They get about uh, they get they get a month uh, over a month actually to decide whether or not they want to pursue it, and uh, so I mean like right now I mean I've sent I've sent a detailed legal uh, a legal defense and this one is actually it's it's a lot more confident I mean I've spent a lot of time kind of reviewing the law and I'm not a lawyer but I I know. I know what our rights are and where we stand on it right now, and so I just sent him a message. I said, "I said, uh, um, be aware. Uh, please don't take down this video because it can it can create monetary damages to your company." And uh, that I say not as a threat, but I mean it is. It's kind of, uh, but there's a reason why I threaten like that. And, um, first of all, there's actually been court cases where when companies take down a video and they don't give it fair consideration uh, as a fair use production, they they. Do get sued for damages so companies aren't really allowed to, to do that it'll get them in legal trouble if they if they do that sort of thing without thinking it through um but the other reason i say that is because i found out exactly i i kind of looked more into this system i've been doing research a lot of research uh, uh since the first takedowns and what we find out the way it works is that first the content id grabs it and then they send it off to uh, actually not hasbro hasbro does not review these claims what happens is third party companies or co companies companies hire another company to review these claims and the companies that review the claims are called hashers uh, or hashing companies it's a, it's a slang term effectively what they are is these the hashers are just people who hash out takedown requests. And these are not uh, legal experts or anything like that. They're just paid $11 an hour to sit in front of the computer and watch like millions of YouTube videos and then say like, uh, no, this is not right. This is, you know, take this one down, take this one down, take this one down. And, uh, and that's why when we post a thing and we're like, no, 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 it's fair use, they just take it down because they, they watch millions and millions and millions of videos and they don't really understand the law. And, uh, and so there you go. So, so like I said, I've opened a new account to not put this one in danger, and I've I've resubmitted the videos, and I'm going through the bureaucratic process, which is very slow and painful. But this time, I've been more direct about it, and I say like, don't don't take this down. It is a legal liability if you do it. Um, and so I've just been very clear about that that this is this is legally okay. Uh, don't take it down. And so we'll see how they respond to that, because again, I'm talking to people who uh, don't really have understanding of the law. These are just they're just they're just like you know, young guys like myself or, you know, men, you know, men and women, like call center folks is all it is. 
So, yeah, so that's kind of who I'm actually trying to stake my legal argument against is just like a, you know, random call center. Uh, and any, anyway, though, um, so that's what I'm doing. But I've also been looking into some other uh, some other uh, venues. And I contacted Derpy TV, and I, I talked to them about hosting. And it looks like they've got a system set up that um, eventually, it, it looks like it might crack if I, <laughs> if I, if I uh, try to go over to them completely, which uh, which is too bad. I thought it might be kind of an interesting interesting joint venture, joint adventure, and whatnot. But from what they've described to me and uh, what I've looked into on the computer resources end, um, we would we would slay them if we if we moved our stuff over, especially because we're planning to grow uh, and and kind of develop more. Um, uh, another thing I should I I caught a cold. So uh, there's that. I've been a, a little a little run down this past week, but uh, let me see what else. Uh, we talked to Vimeo and um, we we spoke to them. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that probably Friendship is Witchcraft made a free account, but we actually are not allowed to do that because because we make income off of ad revenue and uh, and, and merchandise and stuff like that in our website. Um, Vimeo does require that we have a pro account, which means that we've got to pay you know like a monthly subscription fee to continue posting our stuff. Um, I contacted them about the legal things and I told them about what happened with Blip and uh, and kind of like what are we afraid of having happen again. Because uh, the uh, before I get into Blip, which I've got I've got some news to report on Blip, um, they told me they told me essentially that um, that if I had a dispute, like if they if they accused me, if they said like we think this is a copyright violation, and uh, and I send them a thing and I say you know it's it's really not a copyright violation, and here's why I feel that way. Um, they can give me a refund if I can if I can demonstrate that I understand the law and that uh, I. You know, I'm I'm doing my best to be compliant with it. Um, I don't know how well that'll hold up, but at the very least, Vimeo looks like a more professional company than Blip is. Um, the problem with Blip is that later on, I actually kind of went back. I started thinking about it, and I I got kind of irritated with the way that whole thing transpired because we contacted them, and uh, and Blip Blip falsely accused us of breaking the law. They accused us of violating copyright. They they said this is legal foul play. And we responded with a well, you know, with a thought out uh, defense of our work. And we said, it's not, it's not illegal. Um, and this is why. And these are other videos that you host that, that also use this rule. And this is, you know, so give us our fair consideration. And the, the, uh, their customer service rep, and I think there might be just like, I don't know, like maybe like one guy. I don't feel like I was talking to different personalities throughout any of it. Um, I feel like they've just they've just got like one person, and aside from that, like that's all that they want to pay. That's all Blip wants to pay, and um, and so he just totally ignored it though. I mean, like there was no there was no back and forth. There was no discussion over whether or not like it was legal, and uh, they didn't they didn't offer to really discuss anything with me. They just said it's illegal unless you have permission, and I said it's not. And then I explained why, and then I explained the spirit of copyright law. And this because I started off with a legal argument, assuming that this this person who I was going to be disputing with would have legal expertise, um, but he appeared to not have any legal expertise. It didn't seem like he really he'd really got, you know, what I was trying to say. And so that's when I started to kind of break down and go back and be like, this is copyright law. Like this is all the research that I have just done on this law to defend my work. And and uh, and it turned out that all the defense really did nothing for it. All the research did nothing for us with Blip, and uh, and so I started to get kind of angry about that not too long ago. This was uh, uh, just a few days ago, and so I contacted Blip again and I said, look, uh, I'm really unhappy with the way that that this customer service interaction transpired. Is there a way that I can speak to a supervisor? And um, and they closed my complaint. They just there was no response. There was nothing like I'm sorry. You know, da, 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 da. they just closed it. And, uh, and I said, uh, uh, excuse me, I, like you've marked this problem as solved and you haven't responded to me at all. Uh, I asked if I could speak to a supervisor or someone above you so I could maybe discuss with them the way that this whole thing went. Because uh, as it is, you've created like monetary damages for us. Like we were, we are now uh, looking at more expenses than we had before. <laughs> like, this is this is a, dire a direct result of the fact like we made a contingency plan where we were going to move to Blip and then uh, discuss with them in a more hands-on manner with the people at Blip and so that was kind of our contingency plan because the rules they laid out were that as long as we follow their their you know terms of service we would be okay. They all have that catch that says we can always do whatever we want, but 
that's not like a bulletproof shield, you know, it, it's not invincible, and I can, I'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, point being that, that we didn't break any rules, we didn't violate the law, we didn't violate the terms of service that Blip had posted, and yet they, they falsely accused us and then refused to listen to our rebuttal. So yes, so this is this is what I put forward. I said this is what's happened is that you've you've incurred monetary damages on us, uh, and and we would like to talk to somebody about this because, frankly, um, it's kind of a like this is this is not the kind of thing that your company can just get away with doing to people. You may feel like you can, but you can't, and uh, and then they just close the complaint again. So, I said okay. I said, I think I've had enough. I've gotten a pretty good idea of how these conversations are going to transpire. Will you please direct me to your legal representative so I can talk to them about the way that this situation has, has gone down? Because this is getting to the point where where this is like negligence. This is not um, any longer like Blip can choose to host whatever content they want. This is like, honestly, I'm telling you that I I you created losses for my company because you accused me of of uh, violating the law when I didn't. I followed all the rules, I did everything you wanted, and you still closed my account, and you didn't listen to me when I tried to tell you what I was doing, even though I expressed an understanding of the law and a good faith interest in following all your rules. So I said, I need to speak to a legal representative. They closed the complaint. And I said, all right, that's it. This is the last time that I'm gonna politely ask you I want to speak to one of your legal representatives because I have a very serious complaint and this is not the kind of thing that you need to just ignore. And, I, and again, it was a very formal email and I was starting to just get, get, oh, I don't know, just completely incensed with the situation. And I said, I'm going to report you to, I'm going to file a complaint with the, uh, with the Better Business Bureau and, and, uh, and I'm going to look into what I can do about this. Your company has to be accountable. Direct me to a legal representative. I want to talk to this somebody, someone who understands what they can and cannot do in this company. And they closed the complaint again. And, uh, and so I, I contacted the, uh, the Better Business Bureau. And uh, it turns out that, that they don't have any information on Blip. And, uh, and, and the Better Business Bureau, what they are is, is they are... Uh, they're a nonprofit organization, essentially, and they're not always. Uh, what they do is, is they were established in 1912 to kind of put a stop to um, snake oil salesmen and whatnot. Like you'd, you'd get a pharmaceutical company that would sell you like you know fake cures for stuff, and uh, you know so they would report on these companies, and so they'd just keep a running thing. And then like when people would be interacting with a company, they would check on it and they would say like, oh you know I'm gonna buy drugs from this company. Like what are they like? What does the Better Business Bureau say? And then they would see like, oh, this company is totally shifty and people die when they buy drugs from this company. And, uh, and so that's kind of what the Better, Better Business Bureau uh, does. Now, over the years, they've had some controversy. Um, they did some things where they were kind of, you could say they're kind of accepting bribes to improve the, um, the status of a company. Like they would give a better review to a company that, that gave them um, accreditation, acc accreditation fees and whatnot. So they've, they've kind of tarnished their uh, reputation. But the fact is, is that they are still a third party uh, mediator. And so what they do is they go in and they contact somebody and they say, hey, we're with the Better Business Bureau. We're like one of the top 400 visited websites uh, in the U.S. Um, you know, a lot of people still kind of rely on us for reporting on, on incidents uh, with companies and whatnot. And they say, um, you, you know, we want to we want to work this. <clears throat> we want to work this out in a way that's non-confrontational and, and with everyone kind of involved. And so, like, I would send them an angry email and then uh, the Better Business Bureau would look at it and they'd be like, OK, we're not angry. So, and then they would contact Blip and they would say, I think that this is maybe where the wrong has occurred and we'd kind of like you to work it out. Like, do you think you could work it out? And if Blip responds in a positive way and they kind of work it out, then uh, then the business bureau gives them a good a good rating. And they say like, oh, you know, you're, uh, so they worked it out. And, uh, and you were, uh, and so that it, it removes the emotional conflict and just kind of establishes like an objective, like what do you want? What do they want? So I sent a, a complaint to the Better Business Bureau and I, I uh, what I requested was an email. I just wanted an email from Blip acknowledging that that um, they've created a problem for me, like a very real problem, uh, as a result of something that that I had no control over, and uh, they refused to listen to my complaints. And when I wanted to speak to a legal representative, they wouldn't let me. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, there's there's no oversights for their their customer service department. Uh, essentially, 
blip is just completely unaccountable. Like, if something goes wrong and, and like, they don't want, and blip doesn't want to account for it, you're screwed. Because what I found out was that the Better Business Bureau could not get in contact with blip. Like, they sent me an email back in a couple of days and they were just like, uh, we can't get in contact with them. We've been trying for years to get in contact with them, but they never give us any any information. They never respond. So, um, you can't, I, I mean, like, there's no, uh, there's, there's no, uh, what, there's, there's no, like, non-conflict way to settle things with Blip if they, if they screw you. You have to go to court with them. That's, like, it. That's what you get. You can talk to Blip user support. A blip producer support but if that guy's an asshole it's over like that's the end so that's what we've discovered about blip and, and actually that's really terrible um and i was still i'm still mad thinking about it and it's actually one of those things where um when you what what blip did could we've kind of been looking into it like i I'm mad because essentially it was it was like one of those things like I went to blip and and uh, and you know and it was like oh uh, you know you guys you guys hurt me and uh, and they go oh pff, what are you gonna do about it and you're like seriously like I I want to talk to somebody in charge and they're like oh I bet you'd like to talk to someone in charge <laughs> it's like are you, are you kidding like we're dealing in money here and uh, you know, it's just like, well, I'm a millionaire. I don't care. Deal with it. Like, it's my business. I can run it however you want. And what that is like is it's like, a, uh, suppose that Blip were actually like an engineering firm and they built a bridge and then they put up a notice. This is what a terms of use is, is it's like putting up a notice and it says, this is uh, the cars drive here. Like, do not walk in the road. If you walk in the road, you will be hit by a car and uh, and that will be your fault. If you walk on the road, you are negligent. You're being negligent. You'll be hit by a car and you will not, you will be liable. Um, but what Blip did is essentially I followed their rules and I walked on the sidewalk that they provided me doing what I was supposed to do and they still hit me with a car. And, uh, and then I turn around and I say, guys, you hit me with your car while I was walking on your sidewalk, which you implied was safe. There are no signs up that say cars are always dry. Like, and then, and then they tell me, like, the terms of service is like, well, sometimes cars drive on the sidewalk. And, uh, and that happens in real life, too. But you have to think that when cars drive on the sidewalk, when trucks, like, uh, like you know, you get, like, a land survey van or something like that, they put flashing lights on and they drive very slowly and they look out for people. Because people are not expecting cars to be driving on the sidewalk. So uh, if, if, if a survey truck hits a person on the sidewalk... The surveyor who drove the truck, he's the one who's liable because he was negligent. And so you get this concept of negligence uh, in the law, which I've kind of been looking at. And, and, uh, and, and like, I, I feel that you could make a case of negligence on, on uh, what, what Blip did to us. And when I say I feel you could make a case, I don't know that it would be a very strong case or that it would be, be like it would be even worth it. Cause, uh, cause I mean, like in the case, it's a, it's what they call a tort law. It's like a, it's a civil dispute. It would just be something like we go to court and we'd be like, they, you know, they damaged our company, and they'd be like, well, how much do you think they damaged you from by? And you'd be like, by like a couple hundred dollars, and, uh, and or well, a couple hundred dollars a month. It'll add up, but um, yeah, it's gonna add up over time. But the immediate thing. Like, they could say, like, well, if Blip had given you two weeks to, to pack up your stuff, um, like, maybe they owe you, like, maybe Blip owes you a hundred bucks. And so, <laughs> like, that would be, it's hard to say, like, if we did take them to court over over uh, negligence. And bear in mind, it's, it's not criminal negligence. Um, like, there's different kinds of negligence. There's a whole, a whole, um, like I said, I was doing some reading on it. There's a whole lot of different kinds of legal uh, terms. And, uh, but in any case, though, they, they, they can't do what they did, like, just because they have terms of use that say that they, they, they can, they can hurt you however they want, it doesn't, legally speaking, they're not actually protected from a lawsuit, I could, I could press charges if I didn't think it would be a waste of time, and I really want to, because honestly, uh, I feel like they're just really smug about the whole thing. Like, just this whole notion of, like, we, you know, like, we don't care about you. Um, like, they're young, they're, uh, I've, you've, I've looked into it. Blip, they're young guys. Like, uh, Mike Hudak, 
who is is the guy who I had the pictures of earlier. He's uh, he's the CEO, and he's like one of the twenty somethings that got into the internet boom. He's like a college dropout or something. I don't know. Um, I kind of looked him up, and that's how I found these pictures. They're on the web, you know. They're on the web. I didn't. But uh, yeah, so what I'm probably looking at is like uh, this twenty-something guy, or maybe he's in his early thirties now. He's like running the website, and he's he's running it like a twenty-something. You know, he's just like, I don't care. Um, I'm making a million dollars. You know, that proves that I'm ingenious. And uh, and then he's like hired one of his, his friends who also dropped out or something like that to run the uh, producer support thing. And the producer support thing has the same attitude of just like, I don't care, you know, my company's making millions of dollars. And, uh, and they just feel like they're, I don't know, they feel like they're kings of the world. And they're just, I don't know, they're just, they just, they were not accountable to us. And, uh, and the thing that, the reason why I even considered the reason why I even considered the court case in the first place is because it, I, it would be like one of those things like if it made a if it created a legal a legal precedent where um, essentially like it was like video companies need to to be they need to be considered of the people who are hosting their videos I mean like you have to think that down somewhere like if they took our videos off the air, we'd still have the comics, I guess, but but the videos are the thing that most everybody comes to us for. So if just like one day Rainbow Dash Presents just vanished forever, um, for no reason, just because like maybe, maybe like just imagine that we were hosting on YouTube and YouTube was just like, you know what? We think Rainbow Dash Presents is sort of gay and they just canceled our account. <laughs> like the website, the biggest draw for the web website would be would be gone and we would pretty much have to close up Don somewhere. Um, it would kill our company. So what can I say? It's it's a problem that companies like Blip can do this kind of thing. You have to think that like suppose suppose uh, the, you know uh, card games for the world, Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. Suppose that they made some kind of political statement that that Mike Hudak didn't agree with or Blip producer support didn't agree with and so then they just instantaneously shut him down and uh, and then that would be it like like it wouldn't be like youtube where you go through a bloated bureaucratic system and at least it's it's stupid and frustrating but at least youtube is is fair they do it to everyone i mean like we knew that we were going to get that from youtube and and the thing that's nice that i will credit youtube for is that when we said no 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 this is fair use they let our videos come back and the first time that we we uh, posed our defense of the work, it wasn't in legal terms, and it wasn't like in a term. We we didn't set it up as like a don't bring this down or you'll lose money. Um, we just we were just like it's fair use. What are you doing? And uh, and uh, you know, so that might have been our it might have been our fault that the appeal the appeal didn't work. We'll see if this new round of appeals goes through. Uh, but but point being though that that YouTube kind of. Um, you could say that they have a certain system of, of like um, they're they're considerate in a way they give you the benefit of the doubt and uh, and so in, in, in essence YouTube um, isn't exhibiting negligence because you know that if you use third-party content their content ID is liable to grab it and then you have to go through this process but the process is there and they don't just shut you down and then like refuse to listen or cooperate with you there's some consideration given um, so like like I say, it's not, it's, it's it's ridiculous, but YouTube actually has a better system of me, of mediating uh, disputes than Blip does, because Blip did not mediate anything. They just the impression I got was that their producer support um, made a decision and he shut us down, and then after he made the decision, he didn't want to admit that he was wrong, so he just refused to, he just didn't didn't like he just didn't care like it was that was it so uh so yeah i'm i'm still angry with that company and uh i don't like i don't like how that transpired at all but uh i don't know if that's the kind of company that blip wants to run then i guess that that's the kind of company that blip wants to run and someday when they when they stab someone in the back who makes a lot more money than i do off of my videos Maybe then something will happen. Um, as it is right now, uh, I don't know that it would be that there would be any point in doing anything on our end. Um, I'd like to. I just I don't like being treated like a chump, and uh, I don't like 
I, I don't like that. I don't like being blown off when I have a legitimate dispute. It's very frustrating. It's very rude. Um, I don't know. So what can I say? Just not a, uh, not a happy customer. No. <sighs> but yeah. So the blip stuff aside, though, um, I have probably, I have probably been. We've, we've kind of had a bit of uh, a, a shuddering. This, the site and everything on all that, it's all been, there's been a bit of stuttering and uh, we're kind of trying to get back on track. I think that possibly the, uh, all the stress and everything has been a little bit too much. Having gone back to college and whatnot, um, having gone back to college and everything, uh, uh, you know, what can I say? I haven't been sleeping very much and I've been dealing with all the, like, legal drama and, like, where do we, where do we host our stuff? And, uh, uh, I don't know. I've even got a story about the server. We nearly canceled it under the direction of a customer service rep uh, from from our uh, dedicated server uh, hosting, and then, but they, I mean, like they worked it out with us. It was one of those things. It was just, it's kind of a hilarious story, but oh my god. So there's just so much been going on, and and then I got sick, and and uh, I don't know. Some people have been also commenting that I'm losing weight. I don't think I've had a change in diet, so maybe. Uh, <laughs> So maybe, maybe, maybe too much, uh, uh, all at once, but, um, I don't know. I don't know what to do. If I weren't, if I weren't constantly busy, I don't think I would be happy either. So uh, it's not like, um, what can I say? Being sick has slowed me down. I've caught up on sleep. That's one of the good things is that I'm just like, I'm just like, man, I am beat. I'm going to bed at a reasonable time tonight. So I actually feel much better right now. And so maybe that's all I just really need to do is is take it a little bit easier and, and not uh, not get so worked up about this. The good news is that Vimeo does say that we're welcome to kind of host with them. We, we, sh we told them what sort of content we were doing. Uh, they couldn't give us any guarantees, but they told us that they give us our money back if we run into trouble and we can dispute that which means we'd have to fight more but uh, at least it's something and uh, and it'll allow us to kind of do more and and uh, and get the minecraft server open to every you know everybody who we want to bring on and play with and and in, and we've actually got some great plans for the minecraft server one of the things that we're doing is we're, we're actually building um archaeological sites more or less and they contain like books and and some puzzles and clues and whatnot uh, to direct players who kind of want to explore more uh and kind of have that sort of fun to go out and do things it's sort of like a uh, scavenger archaeological hunts and whatnot like zombies are carried around like diaries and things like that and so uh so it's actually pretty cool and uh and i'm i'm sort of excited uh for that you know and, and plus that another thing that we're gonna do is when we start bringing people on we'll uh we'll do segments on stuff that you guys build on our server like if you build something neat and you're like, hey, hey, check this out, we'll come check it out. And we'll do a video on it. And we'll kind of go over to like, why do we think you built this? Like, uh, what is it? What does it look like? And you know, what is? It, what were your intentions? And we'll kind of guess, and then maybe we'll do an interview with you or something like that, and be like, so tell us about this thing that you did, and uh, and we think that that'll be a lot of fun. <sighs> so, uh, yeah. So I mean, like I say, it's not all. It's not all uh, legal drudgery. It's not all. It's not all business drudgery. We do have uh, fun things in the future. Just uh, what can I say? Um, it's. It was just sort of a. It was just sort of jarring to suddenly be making like a real business model for something that um, uh, that I originally never really thought was going to be. Again, that I never thought was going to require something like an actual business model, and, uh, and and but the good news is that our models, I'm pretty confident in it. Um, I'm glad I took all those economics classes when I was in. That's one thing. That's one good thing about being an engineer is that they do make you. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cost analysis stuff that you have to do, and they make you go through classes on it. So not only can I do a cost analysis of like what have, what are our best pricing and uh, and stuff like that, or what are our best. Um, options like we know exactly what kind of server we want and when we if we decide to upgrade we know exactly what kind of server we're going to go to we've got the cost projections done um, i have sat down i have done the math and uh, and you know so we've, we're pretty confident in our, our model we should be we should survive um so i don't think i need to put up the donation thing we're not gonna we're not gonna sink um you know as long as we continue to pro provide content which like I said, is uh, is how I'd like things to operate because uh, if we stop providing content, then um, 
then I you know, like I just I just don't like the donation button still, you know, because it, it entices people and they like they feel like oh give them money, and they'll come back and then they and then I just see that so often and 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 the people don't come back, so yeah, but yeah we'll be okay we'll stand we'll stand up on our own legs and we'll be all right and we'll keep it going, and uh, and pretty soon now uh, I got in touch with Demarcus and we're going to start doing some of our shorts uh, some of our Cloudsdale shorts making fun of the very idea of living in a cloud city, which uh, which which we think will be kind of interesting just that and being Aurora in general, uh, and then uh, some musical things Alan has has had a Thracker rap prepared for a long time he wants to do a thracker rap song and the music for that is done it sounds beautiful so uh, that's something we're looking forward to um i've got another joke too about i heard the uh, brony documentary that they did uh where john delancey like he doesn't he doesn't really sing but he does like a modern major general thing and so we have we have kind of a crack about that that's similar to uh, just just like a, a sort of sort of a joke on that like not really what can I say? Uh, it's it's not like uh, 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 like well, we're not picking on that. We're actually I don't know. We just like the idea of talking about John Delancey pony. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, some jokes about John Delancey. But I have to pay attention to. But I have to pay attention to John Delancey pony. <laughs> you don't understand. Um, yeah. So, yes, it's not all doom and gloom. But anyway, that's what's going on. Um, you guys are free to come check out the website again. Don't be afraid. It is it is operating up to capacity once again. Everything is fine. And uh, and we'll, we'll continue working on making everything come together so that we have a good service and everything is good and we are happy and there is less stress in the future. So, yes, um... I suppose that's it. I will uh, get better soon. I'm already feeling better than I did the past couple days. Um, yeah, it seems like a pretty weak, weak cold. So I will be fine soon as well. And uh, yes, I will talk to you guys another time. You all have a good day.